For many years, the slogan, police is your friend, has been popular, but to a lot of Nigerians, not acceptable. Now there's the community policing concept for which the federal government has allocated 13 billion naira. So maybe with this deception of Nigerians would change and they would accept the police is your friend expression. But while the police force is working to employ 10,000 more people as ordered by the President Muhammad Buhari, which should be done annually, they also have to begin the implementation of community policing. So how would this 13 billion naira be used? And would this proposed community policing solve the insecurity issue in Nigeria? We'll find out as we explore this topic on this episode of Special Report for the next 25 minutes. I'm Ini John Mekwa. <laughs> Police officers, a body of men and women recruited and paid by the state to enforce law and maintain order, and they've always been at the fore of securing the country for economic stability and development. They are the first point of call for handling most internal security cases. The necessity of policing becomes even more evident in a country like Nigeria, typified by diversities in tribe, culture and religion. This is why, after many rounds of discussions and negotiations, the federal government is taking action towards the implementation of community policing by devoting 13 billion naira for this purpose. One of the key agreements for the state uh, community policing is all is the issue of the ownership itself so the communities will not own the police mechanism in their own communities and i'm saying that they have nothing to contribute in any case there's a lot of support community support in many areas going on in the country where uh, people come together and they procure buildings and the motor vehicles and and so many things for the police. The, the, there isn't enough money from the center to fund all of these things. And this is why the, the idea of a, a police address trust fund was also uh, actioned by the federal government. It is now in place. Uh, so funding will come not only from the appropriation by the National Assembly at the center for the police, or whatever, the trust fund is there, but communities must actively be involved. It's already happening in, in many areas. So look at some of the industrial zones, say in Lagos, for instance. You find that uh, police stations located in some of those areas are well endowed there because communities around them, they realize how important it is that they have effective policing. And they don't wait for the government to provide. I think this is what uh, the community policing will do for the entire country. Traditionally, policing was the responsibility of all adults in the community. In medieval society, all adult males were obliged to contribute towards the prevention and control of crime in their community. However, the emergence of the state as an entity with a claim to the monopoly over the means of legitimate violence in society, according to Max Weber in his essay, Politics as a Vocation, resulted into the creation of specialized agencies such as the police and the armed forces for controlling the use of violence by other groups. This system has birthed the system where the security is controlled from the center in Nigeria and it has remained topical in the country. Don't forget that during the time we had regions, we equally had policemen and then it was managed regionally. It was after the collapse of the regional arrangement that we now started to have a central police force. Now, with the central police force, it has a lot of issues because you have to think about, you know, our demography. The population growth rate is so high 
right now we are talking about, say, maybe in the region of about 200 uh, a million. The present police force that we have, how many are there? Is grossly inadequate. And aside that, the sophistication in crime. The criminals have gone steps higher than what you can imagine. So there's need to checkmate this. So, so and know. how do we checkmate this? Mm. It has to start with community policing. Policing has to, you know, really start from the grassroots. Grassroots. But the major problem here is implementation. How do we implement it? Because with the present structure, is a central one, it's a centralized, you know, policing. And with centralized policing, I don't see how uh, community policing will really see the light of the day. I want to see a situation whereby, for example, in the local government, as we speak, we have area commanders. And then we have the DPUs. Still at the local government, we have the, um, we have the uh, civil defense. We have the Federal Road Safety Corps. Even though they are paramilitary, but they are also, they can be classified as security uh, agencies. And then of course, we have the political appointees, that is, the local government chairman. We have the traditional rulers. So these people can form what you call the security committee. Okay? But definitely somebody has to be in charge. So I will look at a situation whereby the area commander will be in charge. There are compelling reasons why law enforcement leaders believe the time has come to alter the policies and practices of their organizations. These reasons are rooted in the history of policing and police research during the last quarter of a century, in the changing nature of communities and in the shifting characteristics of crime and violence that affect these communities. Policing strategies that worked in the past are not always effective today. The desired goal, an enhanced sense of safety, security and well-being, has not been achieved. In Nigeria, there are records of banditry, clashes between farmers and herdsmen, among other insecurity issues, which has brought up the discussion of community policing. Practitioners agree that there's a pressing need for oh, innovation to curb the crisis in many uh, communities. This is not to say that there's no form of community policing practiced in the country before now. In many states, there's been collaboration between communities, the state government and the police, all in debate to secure life and property. The latest move, however, is to formalize the structure. The structure of the proposed community policing seems to differ with persons and perception. While many agree that the personnel should be localized, they warn of the dangers of dividing the country along tribal lines. The idea of you know, breeding local or state organizations that will assist with like vigilante groups you know, gives me worries. For instance, I know that the, in the southwest there are putting together the Omoteco project. Fantastic idea. It's because of the need for community policing. Now, but the challenge is that if the Omoteco is perceived to be Yoruba, there are no Igbos in Omoteco, no houses, no canaries, no uh, birums. Now, when you put Omoteco together, and Nigeria is part of, they are going to operate within the territory of Nigeria. What, how will the non-indigenous of those communities perceive them? 
because their structure of leadership does not accommodate non-indigenous. Or you go to the east and you have uh, Otakago or something, or the north, you have Hizba or any other group. Now, there are Igbo Muslims, Igbo uh, Yoruba Muslims, are they accommodated in the Hizba arrangement? So you still find out that the most neutral and best option is the Nigerian police. We are safer with the Nigerian police than anything else we are creating. With due respect to those who are involved in the whole arrangement, they are creating a bigger monster that we will not see their problem now. In future, these things will be difficult to manage. But if it's under the Nigerian police, and we are sure that first, I repeat, clean-headed Nigerians are elected to public offices, the administration of the criminal justice system, which is the role of the part of the, the place where the police plays a role, will be efficient. They should be absorbed as normal, proper policemen and trained with the curriculum of the Nigerian police force. But their classification in the Nigerian police, you have different units. You have the VIP protection unit, you have the mobile force, you have CIB, which is the Central Investigation Bureau, you have the people dealing with narcotics and kidnap. So there are units. So if we have a uh, community policing structure under a DIG that ensures that they are trained and they are also competently qualified, including their recruitment. You don't bring people into a service that their hab habits and their characters jeopardizes the chances of their success. The disadvantages is that we might end up breeding ethnic interests in the name of community policing. They could also be vulnerable to political establishments because the party in government at the day might want to put in their own people. And by the time the man leaves office or the governor leaves office or whoever is assigned to engineer this whole activity leaves and another person from a different political arrangement comes in, they might want to tamper with what is existing like we've seen most times. They want to change the structures of leadership to reflect um, their interests and people who will protect their interests. Former Governor of Delta State, Emmanuel Dwaha, disagrees that political office holders will abuse the control of the community police apparatus if placed at the hem of affairs. As far as he's concerned, even the present structure could be abused. I do not use the gates of position. Can the president not use the gates of position? <laughs> you see, the, the, the argument is neither here nor there. We are human beings. Anybody, uh, if you say the governor can use the gates of position, the president can also use the gates of position. The inspector general of police can use the gates of position, or the DIG can use the gates of position. That, that, that is not, um, yes, once in a while you can have that happening, but that is not a major challenge that should stop us from uh, uh, approving the issue of community policing. There's no doubt that people uh, sometimes misuse or abuse power. But those are individual um, um, challenges. It's not a major problem. And like I keep saying, or like I said then, um, even if, if you, we, we start the process of approving it now, uh, like when I was in office, um, I knew there was no way it would have been possible to approve it for me to use it against opposition before leaving office. Uh, maybe my predecessor would have, would have used it. So it doesn't really, it's not a big, it's not a big issue. Using it against opposition is not a big issue. Now, what I suggested then was that the, actually the, 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 the local police, which is the grassroots police, should be, should have a local government structure. So a lot of, a lot of the employment and other issues are handled at local government level. Then we, we have at the state level, something like a board with the governor in charge, commissioner of police and all that, uh, which, which is the final authority for the community policing. Those are the ones that should be like checks and balances on the local government uh, uh, level. So at the end of the day, really, it is not the governor that is totally in control of the local police but more or less the, the, the local council chairman and maybe the councillors, you know. So most of the operations will be at that council level and uh, uh, more serious issues will, will, will be escalated to the state level. 
Placing the issues of concern on the fore, many experts agree that the functionality would depend on consideration of the numerous identities that exist within the country. Issues of tribe, religion, language, culture, as well as the perspective of the players. Therefore, to make community policing work, implementing states must explore different angles. Leading the team for the implementation is Deputy Inspector General of Police, Leye Oyibade. He shares the proposed structure. The structure is going to cascade down to the community. When we look at the Nigerian society, we have 774 local governments. So the Inspector General of Police is bringing a project that is going to be all embracing. It's going to accommodate all the critical stakeholders in all the sectors of the society, starting from the traditional rulers, uh, the members of the academia, the, the media, the, uh, the local vigilantes, the hunters, the NGOs, all of them, including the Police Community Relations Committee members that have been doing uh, you know, wonderful uh, work with us. So we will now put them in the uh, committees that have been, uh, it, it has been established. And that committee that have been inaugurated, we call it Community Policing Advisory Committee. We have inaugurated them in almost all the states of the country. So what we intend doing is that these committees are the ones that will screen the volunteers the police officers we call community policing officers that are coming on board to assist us. So we look again at uh, the section 214 of the Nigerian Constitution. It provides that there shall be only one Nigeria police, only one Nigeria police. So in that wise, we are asking that with this structure that the government has put in place, we are asking that everybody should come on board to join us in the vaga to ensure that this concept is acceptable because it's going to be community driven. All other vigilante groups and all of the other, they, they will come on board because we are going to have rules of engagement and operational procedure on how to work and how to make sure that we make policing community friendly. So the community policing officers will come as volunteers. The section 50 of the Police Act gives us the the opportunity and the uh, and the, the powers to recruit such people to come and assist us and like i've said it's about everybody coming to volunteer to assist to collaborate and cooperate with the police in our bid to ensure safer communities in nigeria the issue of arms is not too much of uh, the idea when you call talk about community policing because we want to be preventive, we want to be proactive rather than being reactive. The idea is to nip heinous crime in the board before they, you know, get out of hand. And yes, if you are talking of kicking them, we are going to, after training, we we'll return them back to the various communities where they have uh, been recruited or screened, and then we kit them. The uniform is going to be uniform all over, and then like. Uh, the idea is this is community policing. So the local government, we are, we are looking at it, the local government is being given powers now to, you know, for, for funds. So you find out that the local government will be most likely the best uh, government that will be in a place to just give them palliatives, like we have said. Mind you, these are volunteers. DIG Oyebade says that the operators would be special constables and they shall be recruited as community policing officers. The process of recruitment shall be guided by Section 49 to 50 of the Nigeria Police Act. This would make them auxiliary police officers. He further reveals that the officers would be expected to put in 16 working hours in a week and their remuneration is expected to be the responsibility of state governors after the police must have trained and retrained and gotten them deployed into the local government where they have been recruited. 
because they know the culture, the language, the orientation and the topography of the area for them to be able to work with the police at that level. It's going to be uh, one in which all of us will look at. Reactions have been pouring in from state governors. One of them is the governor of Ondo State, Mr. Rotomi Akaredolu, who disagrees with the proposal that states should handle the funding. However, there are other governors who have already adopted various security outfits to handle community issues. Governor Samuel Otom of Benue State has no problem with the funding of this outfit with a promise to work with the proposed concept. The meeting we had in uh, last year, last year, with the Inspector General of Police and adopted as a security outfit for the North Central Zone uh, a community policing uh, program. Uh, that too, we have agreed that we are going to recruit 100 community policing officers uh, to start with. We can improve on that. And the local government and the state government will ensure funding of this outfit in the state. The vigilante, we have also directed that uh, uh, for a start with this new arrangement we're doing, 20 should be recruited from the local government. And these two will make sure that we make adequate provision to ensure that they function optimally. In Plateau State, the Director General of Plateau State Peace Building Agency, Joseph Lengmang, assures that the Governor had before now asked for the implementation of community policing, which will work with the state-created outfit. He says that while funding may seem like additional burden, the state government prioritizes security. When it comes to the issue of the community policing, I think it takes the investment, the commitment, the dedication of all stakeholders, you know, to make it work. And when I say all stakeholders, I'm talking about the federal government, about the state government. Uh, I'm talking about local governments, because these are very important uh, levels of government, and also uh, international non governmental organizations and indeed the donor agencies. I mean, we've been working very closely, and I'm sure there are even multilateral institutions that have contributed significantly to the discussions on how we can have a robust, you know, uh, uh, community policing framework that works for everyone. <laughs> There won't be any clash because, uh, like I've, I've mentioned earlier on, uh, the, the, conver the discussions or conversations leading to the adoption of this framework uh, was, 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 was multi level, it was carried out in a multi level uh, fashion. And of course, uh, we, uh, I mean, including a wide range of stakeholders, including the police uh, uh, force and also other security agencies and traditional institutions and also uh, religious institutions and other important stakeholders in that respect. Uh, so in terms of synergy of ideas, of, of strategy, I mean, we are at home on the same page, uh, one to another. I mean, the state government and also uh, the, the Nigerian police force. So Operation Rainbow, I, like I've told you earlier on, came into existence even before uh, the, the whole conversation about community policing gained traction in Nigeria. Uh, the Operation Rainbow is a security outfit that brings together the different security agencies working together to prevent the outbreak of violent conflict and to promote a stable and a secure society. So it's, it's more of a crime fighting and also conflict prevention or conflict response uh, framework and mechanisms uh, that uh, the state government had adopted over the years, given uh, uh, the failure of, of, of successive uh, you know, administrations and security agencies to nip in the board the issues underlying the outbreak of violent conflict in Plateau State, which, of course, like you know, is something that spans over, you know, I mean, over a decade, almost 20 years now, from 2001, uh, you know, to almost to 2015. We've all had ep different episodes of, of violence in, in Plateau State. So given those challenges, operational challenges that uh, the security agencies were facing and their inability, really, to uh, put a permanent lead on, on, on these issues of conflict and the outbreaks of violence in the state, the state government felt there is a need for us to have an all-inclusive, a, a homegrown, homebred kind of a peace and security response framework. Uh, uh, and, 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 and it was, of course, uh, 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 designed and, and established by law uh, in that respect, and their, idea, their, their work essentially, of course, is both proactive and also reactive in that respect. 
Well, that's it for this episode. Talk to us on our social media platforms. Share your opinion with us. Ask us questions. We really want to hear from you. I'm Ini John Mekwa.